Hello, welcome to the Glass Tower Top 5. It's the week of May 25th, 2017. We're counting down the top five art events in Texas. I'm Randy Knutson. And I'm Brandon Zeck. And we are here at William Reeves Sarah Foltz Fine Art in Houston, but we will get to that in just a sec. Number five is a double header at the Manila Collection here in Houston. The first is Between Land and Sea, artist of the Quintus Slip. Quintus Slip was a tiny little two block uh, wharf, essentially, mm -hmm. uh, lower Manhattan, where all kinds of people you know about, Agnes Martin, Ellsworth Kelly, um, lived down there. I love seeing Ellsworth Kelly works on paper always. Well, um, and this, this show includes some of his great little tablet works that are like a bunch of little almost right. sketches and pieces framed together, hung together. And then Lenore Tawney has a beautiful couple of drawings that go together that I just loved in that show. And then Jack Youngerman has some really great pieces in it. And then the other show at the Minnow Collection is The Beginning of Everything. This is their drawing show. This is sort of like we're getting ready to open the Drawing it's Institute in October. It's gearing up. This is this show's going to close. It's been on view for a little while. It's closing June 18th. So this is, um, as they say, three remarkable trustees of the Menil Collection, Janie C. Lee, Louisa Studi Seraphim, and the late David Whitney. Um, and the brochure says all of which are recent promised gifts and bequests from these trustees. All the drawings in the show are recent promised gifts. Compared to the Bernice Rose 2008 show that was sort of the announcement of the Menil Institute, this is not as much of a pleasure by a long shot. It's a bit of a Batan death march of all works hung at the same level throughout these galleries. I mean, what are you going to do when you have a bunch of drawings that are all the same size? How are you going to, how are you going to spice it up? Ah, uh, be Walter Hopps and yeah. figure out a way and, I don't know, salon style, something. I will say there are some really nice pieces in the show. It's worth it to check it out. If you have not already seen it, it's closing soon. Number four this week is in Austin at the Umlauf Sculpture Garden and Museum. It's uh, mentoring a muse. It's an exhibition of works by Charles Umlauf and Farrah Fawcett and a few things from Farrah Fawcett's collection, her entire archive, uh, or at least the majority of it, was donated to the Blanton. So there's all of these kind of weird small things, like there's a napkin that Andy Warhol drew on for Fair. He drew Farrah's eye on it at a dinner one night. But there's also some really nice sculptures by Farrah Fawcett and some really nice paintings by Farrah Fawcett, and then sculptures of Farrah Fawcett done by Umlauf. Uh, Fawcett was one of his students at UT. She, she was. was like 18, 19. And you know, he was- Imagine an 18 or 19 year old Farrah Fawcett. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you were not alive for Charlie's Angels in her heyday in the 70s. So, I mean, in my imagination, she looms very, very large. There's the famous poster of her like, and her teeth and her hair. Do you, are, is she, does she loom large in the, the imagination of the I feel millennial like, generation? I feel like for the youth today, she's maybe more of kind of like this mythological figure because she, I think she passed away from cancer in, 2009? Fairly recently, yeah. Um, but, I mean, let's let's be real, that was when I was in ninth grade. <laughs> but... God. <laughs> Number three is Daryl Louster Trace at the Eamon Carter Museum in Fort Worth. It's up till next March. It's up for a long time. So Daryl Louster, <laughs> one of my favorite Texas artists, always is mining American history, um, mining the objects and ephemera mm -hmm. of American history. And in this case, and I actually haven't seen this, but you've seen it, he's mm -hmm. taken marble and inscribed it with fragmentary traces of famous American texts. Yeah, manifestos. I don't think it's just American, but there are, you know, Constitution, Bill of Rights, that kind of thing. Uh, but everything is so fragmented that everything kind of blends together. And it has a very kind of ethnographic display as well. They're in the lobby of the Eamon Carter, kind of in this glass, case all side by side next to each other. It almost looks like a weird Rosetta Stone that's been deconstructed and you kind of want to put the pieces back together but then the more you look the more you realize they actually don't fit back is together. Is he making a comment about our ruin? Ah. Uh, number two is at the Contemporary Austin and it's a film by Mark Lewis called Galveston. Uh, the film was commissioned by the Contemporary Austin. It's mainly focusing on the architecture of Galveston through I believe it's one Moody Tower, which is this big kind of looming or the only skyscraper. It's the skyscraper in, in Galveston. The film is totally playing on how you can see that building basically anywhere in Galveston. Uh, the majority of the film is a camera that's been mounted upside down on the back of a car. And the film is really surreal because you're very disoriented when you step into it, if you step into it when it's upside down because the sky is Oh. on the ground and everything's really blue and it's just this kind of weird situation that you have to grapple and get your bearings in. But no virtual reality glasses. No virtual reality glasses, well, no sound. 
Mm. It's a bear. And number one is the Texas Aesthetic 11 here at William Reeves Sarah Foltz Fine Art. This is something they've done 11 years in a row. Mm. So they are doing programming throughout the next couple of months. There's music, there's artist talks, uh, there's books. They've collaborated with a and uh, Press on this, which has done some major books on Texas artists. A lot of this is work exploring the Texas landscape, Texas flora and fauna, Charles Jones woodcuts that we both really beautiful liked multi -block a woodcuts. whole lot. Uh, Mary Baxter bronzes of animals are awesome. Um, Jerry Salter pastels, I really like those as mm -hmm. well. And then of course, you know, paintings by Billy Hassel, David Caton, a lot of the sort of icons of Texas landscape painting yeah. are all represented in this show and part of the programming that will be occurring through the month of June and into the first week of July. So there's a bunch of stuff happening. I was very interested in the live Texas music that is gonna be part of the programming, which is curated by Joey McKeel from K True here in Houston. Mm -hmm. um, and then these artist talks and stuff should be really great. If you miss it, they are recording everything and the videos will be available on their website um, at some point. So what are you doing Memorial Day weekend? I'm gonna go to Austin and not see art for once. <sighs> or actually, that's a lie. I'm gonna see the Nina Kajadorian show for the third time. Because you love that show. Because I love that show.